Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Hello and welcome to the MVC3 and jQuery mashing it all up session. I am Kamala Rajan and I will be presenting this session today. I am the technical manager at Marlabs Software Private Limited, Bangalore. Today's uh, presentation is on ASP.NET MVC 3.0 and the advanced topics. So I have a few announcements to make just before we start the session. Right? Uh, there's a quiz associated with this session. At the, at the end of this session, please take the quiz, and it will be live till today, 5 p.m. There are some really exciting prizes like uh, the notebook PCs, arc mouse, and movie ticket coupons to win. Please provide your feedback for the session. Again, the feedback console for this session will be live till 5 p.m. today. Your feedback is considered in deciding the content for the next event. In case you are facing any technical problems, please change your status on the top right corner of your screen and someone will assist you. If you have, any, if you have questions in between the presentations, either use the Ask a Question button on the VTD website or use the QA panel on the live meeting console to ask your question. I will try and answer as many questions as possible. Whatever remains unanswered will be put up on the event website within a month. Right. So let us, let us just start this session with a simple poll. I would like you to take up, uh, all of you to take this poll and uh, tell me what do you know about ASP.NET MVC to start with. That's good. Uh, I see a lot of people suggesting that they are new to MVC, and uh, this particular session will be really helpful for them to understand what is ASP.NET MVC, the concepts behind MVC, and uh, the latest MVC 3 release, which was done in January by Microsoft, and the main features of that. So before we get into okay, what are the features of MVC, let us just briefly you know, uh, go into the you know the features that we were familiar with earlier, like the ASP.NET, ASP.NET web application, and the creating ASP.NET pages, you know, to solve our business problems. Right. So as you say in the classic ASP.NET, we have um, the main features were like it, you know, we had high-level abstraction over HTML, HTTP, simplified state management, view state and postback post model, control model, and data binding. View state and postback model is the most common thing that we are using. We were, you know, accustomed to in the classic ASP.NET. It was a simple, you know, event-driven mechanism and a simple page controller pattern that was implemented in the ASP.NET MVC. We were, it was pretty robust and we were able to solve pretty much, pretty much many of the business problems that was associated with our day-to-day -day activities, business activities that we are having. All right. Let us now go through and see what were the drawbacks of classic ASP.NET. Some of the basic drawbacks were suboptimal URLs. Basically, the URLs used to be really complex and uh, uh, the the way you you were accessing you know using the data across pages and accessing this data used to be a little bit cumbersome, and there was a feature called as view state, which was 
pretty much heavy to use in terms of the when whenever there was a large data to be used it used to slow down your system And it was pretty much hard to test. Now, uh, those of you who have tried um, writing unit tests for uh, ASP, ASP.NET web page will, will vouch for it that it was pretty much hard to test. And thus, we have a, a very robust, uh, you know, um, architecture where we are, we can only test the, you know, business layer or the data layer. And uh, there was all sorts of code in the page itself that is associated with the code behind page. <coughs> So this is some of the uh, classic ASP.NET downsides that we were seeing. Now, to solve some of these and, you know, to help separate your view logic from the, uh, a, the view logic from your, you know, actual code behind, ASP.NET MEC wa was created. So ASP.NET MEC is a new project type for not only VS 2010, that is ASP.NET MEC 3, uh, it, it, had a, it has a new routing mechanism applicable not just for AS, ASP.NET MEC but also to the ASP.NET 4. Easier to write using test-driven development like using NUnit or any other unit testing tool that we are having. It provides a clean separation of concerns in terms like our uh, ASP.NET page is totally uh, you know, it's only a view that it doesn't have any kind of code behind or the code behind is not attached. All your code is going to be there in another file called as a controller, which we will just see in a brief moment. It's not exactly a web replacement for existing web forms. Uh, there are different criteria that we can think of when we are going to choose ASP.NET MVC as the architecture to be used in any kind of a project. And some of these uh, you know, suggestions can be found on the ASP.NET MEC site also. So, but we, 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 it's not like we are being compelled to you know, use ASP.NET MEC. We can feel free to ignore MEC and go with our traditional ASP.NET web page concept. This is only an alternate way where we can have a complex uh, business problem to be solved in a much better way like using uh, test-driven development and uh, you know, so different uh, separated concerns altogether. So basically, when you see ASP.NET MEC, it is defined as a model, view, and controller, right? We will, as we go on into the session, we will delve deeper into what is view and what is a model and what is a controller in, in ASP.NET MVC. Uh, so the basic premise is model, view, and controller, right? So. Just we'll just step back up briefly a little bit and identify what used to happen in our classic ASP.NET page, classic ASP.NET page. So whenever there is there was a browser request, the request used to land directly in the page, that is the ASPX page. The ASPX page used to be processed along with all the parameters supplied, and then the ASPX page will then be, you know, processing its request. Uh, by accessing a business layer, other classes, other components, and accessing data, processing the data and presenting it back to the user. Here it is slightly different. The browser here, consider there is a request place, like, uh, like for asking for a list of products. Now the browser requests for products. Now root is determined by the ASP, ASP, ASP.NET MEC engine, and a particular controller is activated. The method on the controller is invoked. 
that is the products method or whichever the you know controller method we are asking for is invoked controller processes the request if you notice the difference here the the request is directly landing to the controller and not to the aspx page as we saw in the classic asp.net style the controller then renders the view passing in custom view data and the urls are rendered pointing to other controllers also we'll just go deeper into uh, what are the you know salient features of view and the controller in a brief moment I was just talking about routing in the previous slide I was talking about how a request lands lands to the controller after getting routed right by the asp.net ms ms engine so basically what is this routing a browser request gets mapped to the controller action through a feature of asp.net ms called routing routing basically uh, the engine basically uses a routing table which is inbuilt to handle the incoming request this routing table is basically uh, defined okay in uh, in the application itself it's it's default uh, the default routing will be provided in the msc global.asp asp asax file in the uh, project which is available in the project the route table can also be uh, you know defined by us but by default there will be some def uh, you know default uh, routes also assigned to the application when a asp.net application first starts the application start method is called right this method then uses a method called register routes method and the register routes method creates creates the default route table which is defined in the global.asx file so the urls can be mapped to a route handler the extra level of in, um, uh, in direction can be added uh for that particular route also the salient features are like the handlers can be changed without impacting the url the url can be changed without impacting the handler and for example an example of an url uh, to be used is like http://www.mysite.com/home/product/list once this is entered into the browser and pressed enter the product list will be the method that is going to be accessed by the uh, mvc engine and home will be the controller and this is defined in the global.asx file where we are having the global route and the register routes will be executing it basically uh the uh, once the route routing action is completed the controller will be responsible for you know the way the user interacts with an asp.net mvc application the controller contains the flow workflow logic for asp.net mvc application and the controller also uh, determines what response to send back to the user when the user makes a browser request so we'll just have a look at it uh, in a brief moment when we go to the next line here is an example of the default routes that you can find in the uh, global.asx file and a, an example of how the register routes method will be executing the uh, or creating the route and mapping it
as i was just discussing uh, about the controller right the urls to route or urls you know, the, the asp.net ms engine routes the request based on you know uh, the ur based on the url to a particular controller and the controller actions are also provided in the url the actions are nothing nothing but uh, the methods which are been defined in controllers so controllers execute this logic and chooses which view that's based on what you have defined in the uh, application in in the in that particular method like if you see an example just below we see uh, you know method called show post that will be the action basically right so basically a controller is responsible for responding to the request made against an asp.net mec website each browser is mapped to a particular controller for each browser request sorry is mapped to a particular controller for example earlier we saw we saw an example where we have home slash products now the moment the uh, uh, home slash products now product list basically the moment this is press uh, the, this is entered into the browser that is directly mapped to a controller called home and the method called product list this product list method will be executed like you know it will be fetching the values from the model and uh, getting the list of products in this case and this sending it as sending it to the view page we will just see how the view will handle this particular data and display it so the uh, controller will be calling executing the view uh, which view to be executed by this request the controller might return a particular view back to the browser or the controller might redirect to some other controller also in this case basically a controller is a class that derives from the base system.web.mec.controller class because a controller inherits from this base class a controller inherits several uh, other useful methods for free which we will discuss in a moment as i as i was just mentioning the controller action is basically the methods which are defined in the controllers themselves there are different kinds of action results which can be uh, used like view uh, the view result the empty empty result or redirect to another uh, 